Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 133. This episode is with my new friend, Wendy Lee Zaney, who is a mutual friend of uh, Savannah Odit, a two-time previous guest. So I probably should have expected how great she was, but she even blew those expectations out of the water. She's so awesome. It was really cool to get to hang out with her, and we talked about a bunch of stuff. We actually talked about how she immigrated here from Taiwan into the States to Florida, of all places in the world, which is really cool because I'm in Florida. And we talked about how uh, she drove from Florida to Los Angeles to pursue acting, how she actually started in entertainment by sword fighting at kids' parties. Yeah, let that sink in. She was sword fighting at kids' parties. What a cool way to start. And imagine, how many people can actually say that? Anyway, we talked about that. We talked about uh, her first big commercial role. Kubo, my pug, for anyone who doesn't follow me, I got a pug recently. Um, he makes his first appearance in this, and I left it in just because. Why not? Um, we, we talk about how Wendy actually went from acting into hosting, and she's worked for Collider, she's worked for Sideshow, a bunch of different people. We talk about her YouTube channel, The Movie Couple, which is fantastic. We talked about her going to New Zealand to visit the set of Mulan, and just all the crazy amount of things that she does all the time at her hustle and just her drive is so inspiring. She's such a cool person. We talk about her podcast, the Geek and Glitter podcast, a bunch of stuff. It's great. Wendy's awesome. I'm going to stop talking. Let's just do this. Everyone, please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 133 with Wendy Lee Zaney. Theme song time. <laughs> Is Kubo? He will be five months old tomorrow. He's such a oh my gosh! I know. You have a you have the puppy phase. <sighs> Tell me about it. It's uh, it's an What's experience. That like? Well, he... is it your first dog ever? <laughs> no, uh, right? I grew up having dogs, but I've never okay. raised one myself. Ah! Uh... I never realized how much work my parents did. It's like, oh. Oh, right. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> yeah, you have to wake up. You have to time out their walks and oh, what yeah. needs to go, what kind of food. Mm -hmm. Look out for allergies. Uh, yes. It's, it's, and pugs specifically, you know, they've, they're brachiocephalic. So, like, they have breathing problems. And I'm like, I'm asthmatic. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the same. <laughs> it's the same. I'm like, this is my son. We have a lot in common. And, Does he snore at night? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and he he'll get into fits and whatnot. He's he's the greatest thing in the world. How cute! But he like it's so funny because we got him at like five and a half weeks. We got him really really small. Oh and, uh, yeah, the breeder was like, take him, and I was like, uh okay. Oh, okay, so, I'll take him. So he was so small, and so at first we're like, okay, how do we do this? We had to like grind up his food and then add water to it and like feed him that for a while because his teeth oh. hadn't fully come in yet. <laughs> oh my god oh, that's so, so cute tiny but now he's like before he'd you know chew on our fingers and stuff because he's teething and it wasn't a problem but now he's strong and it hurts <laughs> so, <laughs> you're like okay, no biting yeah, i'm like okay listen that is here's blood. a chew toy <laughs> exactly just, just take it just take it please take it down, like, but, but the fingers the better <laughs> yeah exactly that's what he does sometimes he'll it, it, we watched this video and it was like your dog doesn't want to hurt you just so you know <sighs> So when it bites you, <laughs> just scream or be like, ow. And the dog will be like, oh, man, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Not him. That's... Not oh, him. <laughs> no. I was going to say, oh, he gets it. No, <laughs> he does not. Maybe other dogs do, but he's like, yes, perfect. That's what I wanted. <laughs> You're screaming, good human, good. Exactly. He's like, I crave man flesh. They're like, cool. Oh, no. <laughs> Cute. He's he's the best. That's the problem though, because he's so cute. It's like yeah. you want to get mad at him, but then you're like, ah, oh, but you I have can't. a wrinkled forehead. It's, yeah, oh, man. It's like you're but, so cute. But it's great. It's great. It's so much work. Yeah. But, but it's great. It's like having it's a, a lot of work. Yeah, really. But a little bit easier because they don't talk back to you, and then Agreed. you know they can't say, "I hate you. I'm leaving." Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Exactly. <laughs> Just open the door. Enjoy. 
Enjoy. Go. <laughs> don't right. call me for money. Thanks. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is a way better alternative. At least oh, yeah. if we leave him for a while, we don't we won't find him dead. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's more than happy to do to lay around and be cute all day. Exactly. Babies, on the other hand, no offense to anyone who has babies. Correct. They're very loud. Correct. Yeah. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no thank you. My my wife and I joke all the time. Now we're like, you know, we weren't really into having kids beforehand. Now we know for a fact we don't want them because this one is a child in and of itself. And I was like. This is nowhere near as bad as a human. Ima- yeah, I was going to say, imagine all the additional costs. Exactly. I didn't even think about that. Like hospital bills and checkups Diapers and stuff. Diapers oh. and food and clothes that they only wear for two to three months and then they yeah. are growing out of it. And then what? And then school. Oh, yeah. Sheesh. It's a lifelong commitment. It is. <laughs> it's a minimum 18-year sentence. <laughs> minimum. I feel like that's why my parents, when they brought me over to the States and then eventually my mom, because she's not a citizen, she went back to Taiwan. She's just like, ha, sure. ha, I washed my hands off you. <laughs> I dropped you off here. Enjoy. Enjoy the life. Bye. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, not, I need money. Please, nope. please sorry. feed me. <laughs> <laughs> please feed me. I, that was my college years. Please feed me. I'm sorry. What do you need? You need books? That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's so funny. They're still in Taiwan? Yeah, they're still in Taiwan. So my mom stayed with me for my for my teen years until until college and after that she's kind of just she's like all right i'm 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 too old you you do this on your own (laughs) so i did yeah there you go it's your turn yeah that's cool so then how old were you when you came over uh i was 11 or 12 oh when i came to the states however old you are when you're in the fourth grade I think it's about that. Fourth. That might even be younger. Oh, that's younger. Yeah, fourth is like. Maybe nine or ten then. Yeah. Yeah, maybe nine or ten then. Wow. And uh, yeah, so it was was a little rough. I bet. I think I was 11 because I was going into fourth grade. Mm -hmm. So I started fourth grade here in the States. Oh, okay. Okay. What state did you land in? Florida. Wow. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Yeah, of all I know. Places. It's me, Savannah. Yeah, He's that's in the tr- pot. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I will take your fashion sense just by being <laughs> in the same pod. That's cool. Thank you. What, what part of Florida? So my aunt was in like Miami Lakes area near oh, near Aventura. Yeah, yeah. That whole area. So that's kind of where I I spent most of my like elementary childhood. Wow. And then for high school, my and middle after middle school, my mom said, you know, let's look at high school. And the only high school that was that I lived in the district of that was a public school. She didn't want me to go. It didn't have the best reputation for safety. Fair. So she said, let's not do that. And uh, so she, I thought maybe she would put me in private school because all my friends started to go to private school. Mm-hmm. She said, ah, that's too expensive. We don't have money for that. <laughs> You're in the public school system, young lady. Also fair. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So then she moved me up to Fort Lauderdale so I could go to a different high school that didn't have the safety concerns. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I like Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. I'm like an hour and a half from both of those places. Where are you? I'm in Naples. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm right you on the other coast. for a fishing trip. That sounds about right. That sounds right. That's pretty much all you can do here. There's nothing. There's nothing here. <laughs> Anyone that visits, I'm like, let's go somewhere else. Let's go. Let's go to where are you close to? That's right. Naples. You have to drive inward. Yep. Yep. And north. I can go to the Everglades. Oh, if yeah. If I okay. wanted, I can just walk into the swamp. That's a. You that's can not find a gator in your backyard. Yeah, I have before. I have before. Yeah. I believe it. I actually, I was on the way to set maybe a, a few months ago. And mm-hmm. as I was driving down the road, there's a like a ditch on the side, and there's yeah. just a five foot gator swimming in the ditch. And I was like, "Oh, look at that <gasps> guy!" And then I imagined being a tourist, being like, <gasps> and "I was like, oh yeah, no, they're literally everywhere, like all the time." It's weird. It's weird. It's they weird that are. that's my normal. You know what I mean? I know. But even when you see them, still, even though you've seen it many a times, you've heard all the stories about a gator, you know crashing through someone's yeah. swing door and being in there like eight foot alligator in my kitchen yeah you still when you see it you're like oh my god yeah I'm a picture of this gator yeah it's pretty cool i feel the yeah. same way about armadillos 
whenever I see an armadillo, I'm just like, oh, look at it. Oh my god, I, I forget that. There's, there's so many with with wildlife. Uh, for me going to high school in Fort Lauderdale, it would be cows. <laughs> just driving through the wild patches. cows. <laughs> and, but they would mosey around. And they'd be on the road, just a whole herd of them. That's awesome. This cross and the school bus would have to stop, let them go. Yeah. And then we can go. That's so cool. Yeah. I love it. Anything. Florida. Anything, well, now. Yeah, Florida for real. <laughs> well, now it's like the other coast is overrun by iguanas. Like they're everywhere. Is it the West Coast or is it the East Coast? The East Coast. Like where Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> Miami is. They're covered in iguanas. Like there's, That's a, amazing. there's a bounty on them. Like if you kill iguanas now, they're like, we will pay you like $15 per iguana because there's so many of them. Why? What is that? Like, why? I've seen them growing up by the pool. They would, you would just see them because yeah. where where my aunt lived. So, because I, I stayed with her, it was very. Mm-hmm. It had the pool, and then it was by the lake. You know, you're, like it's very tropical looking and really cool. Sure. And you would just see random iguanas, but yeah. it just you know one or two every summer or so. Not a bunch of them. Oh yeah. Now they've they've taken over. They've taken <laughs> over. It's so crazy because I mean they get to like you know, six feet long. I mean, yeah. they're massive. And like one becomes Godzilla, according yeah. to the 2004 version. I mean, know? it's 2020, so a giant iguana eating all of us would not be, it. I it's don't have it on my card. bingo card, but I should. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to scratch it off, but it's there. Just it, in it case. Might. Yeah. Put Godzilla down. Godzilla. <laughs> That's meteor. right. Meteor. That's right. Equally likely this yes. year. It's yeah, like, I know. It's like in a uh, cabin in the woods, the board. You know, that's what 2020 is. We just didn't know it yeah. at the time. Just didn't know it. It's like the biggest bingo card ever. You just yeah. keep adding on the squares. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see I didn't see murder hornets coming, but all right, oh, we've got it. We've got those it. Those things. Oh, they're scary. You just what a weird time to be alive. I know. But also, it's it's going to be cool to say we lived through it when it's over. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yes, in 5 it is. years, we can be like, "Remember 2020?" And you're like, Ugh. yeah, try not yeah. to. Yeah, I want to be on the porch telling yeah. people to get off my lawn with my iced tea and just be like, you remember 2020? <laughs> that's right, that's right. You I remember. remember. <laughs> oh, that was a weird year. Yeah. <laughs> the great iguana migration of Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> <laughs> the murder hornets, yeah. they were here. And Carol Baskin still never got caught, I tell you. <laughs> And then she was uh, not dancing with the stars. Yeah. Isn't that so weird? That's so weird. I haven't watched it. I don't think I can bring myself to it, no. but I think it's so odd. It's so weird. The gloves Why? are off this year. It's like, I, I subscribe to living by Why Not? But also, <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm coming around because of this year it's like to the wise yeah it's like why not but now i'm like why why is any of this i don't oh my god you've broken me (laughs) that's the new bumper sticker that's the new log line for 2020 2020 why yeah just why why Why? and then like maybe an extra question mark just (laughs) because just because just because it's crazy crazy so you indeed what a small world though because Taiwan, oh. I don't know if you know this, is nowhere near Florida. It's quite far. No, it's, it's quite far. far. I may have looked up where it is. Maybe. I it's did. about from Florida. So let's see. From Florida to California mm-hmm. to LAX is about a five-hour plane ride. Maybe mm-hmm. six, I say about five. Yeah. And then crossing all the, depending on where you go, if you can get a straight flight from LAX to Taipei and then transfer to Kaohsiung, it's probably about 17 to 20 hours, depending. Ooh. Yeah, so it's because you cross the line too. So it's a, uh, you want to get the rolls with the the extra leg room. You pay extra, you want to pay extra for that or get Smart. an ILC so you can stretch out your legs. Smart. Smart. Yeah. Had you been to the States before you moved? I did. I, for a summer vacation, literally the summer before I came out. Ooh. Uh, my mom put me on a plane with my uncle, her brother, her youngest brother, mm-hmm. because he wanted to come and take some courses here, um, you know, at the universities here in the U.S. Cool. So they did that. And she said, well, why don't you take my daughter and, and you know, and go visit my sister and she can have a kind of a cool summer. But I still had school work because in Taiwan, the school system, the way it works, that it's the kids were in school Monday through Saturday. Saturday's oh. only a half day. 
but it's a okay. full day. It's you go in at seven, and I think you don't get home until like three or four. It's Jeez. a full, full, full. It's What's a yeah. What do you mean? It's a full day. day. Get out of here. And Taiwan. then yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a half day. It's and Saturdays you don't have to wear the uniform. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's even why though we're in public day. schools. Yeah, it's half day. <laughs> doesn't count. It doesn't yeah. count if you're in uniform. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> But the teachers, so what they would do, and I don't know if they changed this, mm -hmm. but you would stay with your teacher for two years. So first and second grade, it's the same teacher. Third and fourth oh. grade, is the same teacher. That's so cool. during the summer, between third and fourth grade or first and second, you would, the teacher would send you home with however equivalent days of homework to the days that you are on vacation. Oh. And you have to do those. And then you bring it all back on your first day of fourth grade. And you say, here you go. Uh -huh. So, okay. and, and I obviously, uh, had, had that with me. So even though I was enjoying the pool live and going to McDonald's and visiting <laughs> Disney, Disney world, my aunt would say, okay, well now you have to do schoolwork. I was like, this is vacation. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? My mom would call me, are you doing your schoolwork? I would lie. No. <laughs> yes. I mean, no. Yes. She's like, you need to do it. If you're not, if you're not, if, if I come, if you come home and it's not done and then she, some sort of threat to do something. <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow. No, I you will won't, be there Mom. tomorrow. I know for a fact you can't get here that fast. <laughs> It'll be at least the day after tomorrow, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> you can't reach me from here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hang up the phone real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Long distance call. She won't call back. That's right. That's right. This is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That text message and stuff didn't exist back then. That's right. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Way to avoid parents. Don't pick up the phone. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's cool, though. That that probably helped, I'm sure, because I, I imagine Taiwan is quite different. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everything. It was a, such a culture shock, of, you know, and the language is being a big one. So coming here and kind of seeing the life and it just and, and the spacing and everything, you know, Taiwan is, especially in Kaohsiung, is quite condensed. So, uh, Florida is, you know, got nice grassy, like side, big sidewalks, grassy curbs and, you know, lakes and, sure. and canals and things like that. We don't really get to see those in Taiwan. So I had a blast that summer. Oh, I had cool. such a blast. Yeah. Right on. What, what is Taiwan? Like describe Taiwan for me. I've never been. So Taiwan is think so there's two parts. I grew up in the city. I grew up in Kaohsiung. So it's more cool. like suburbs uh, uh, just more condensed. And so sure. think of think of New York in the sense of living conditions. Hmm. So very very small. Everybody's kind of stacked on top of each other. Um, minus the super tall buildings, we have them, but the more into the city you go, but the more away in the more residential areas, you'll, you'll have, you know, tall apartment buildings, but not quite so tall and sure. less spacious. Uh, so a lot of homes and apartments would all stack on top of each other. The streets are small and narrower, just enough to usually fit a car through. Sure. But not, but not two cars at once. Right. Of course. But everybody is on those little motor scooter Oh, sweet. Bikes. Yeah. Little, little mopeds. Yeah. Little mopeds. My yeah. mom had one. My dad had one. It oh, was, so it was cool. great. Like I, if I, if I stayed there, I would have to learn how to drive one. I wouldn't know how to like now thinking sure. about it. <laughs> I, I would be, I would probably just either walk, take public transportation. Cause it's really easy there. Kind of like New York mm -hmm. and everywhere else, except for in LA and yeah. public transportation here is awful. <laughs> it's yeah. awful. The system yep. sucks. And uh, yeah. And it's, it's just a lot of, a lot of good street food. You'll find a lot oh. of night markets and street foods. That's always super crowded. People are yelling at you because they want you to try their stuff because their stuff is better than the the guy in the other stall who's selling the exact same thing. And yeah. it's, you can bargain. It's so much fun. What? Yeah. Oh man. Oh yeah. My wife would love that. Her two favorite things Have you... are food and bargaining. Yes. <laughs> she should. She should go. She should, she can go to Taiwan and just bargain up a done a storm. Yeah. Done. She'll do it. She'll do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool though that's really cool i love learning about like how things are different that's why i think traveling is super important yes. for anybody like just to yes. see that like oh right the world is bigger than what you think mm -hmm. it is and they get yeah. things and our differences make us the same you know I, I i love that i love that and to kind of speak on travel i think you know i agree with you on everyone should travel and internationally especially if they're totally. able to Totally. To see the culture, yeah, everything. But in the case that you can't at yeah. least get out of your state, 
yeah, oh, for sure. visit a different state because there's so much to, just because you're in the same country doesn't mean you'll have less of a you know great uh, travel experience. So mm-hmm. you know, I feel like I still haven't traveled enough in the states. I've been through. Well, I drove from Florida to LA, so I got to what? see. There you go. I do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> you made the Savannah trek. She did the same thing. Oh, did she really? Yeah, yeah. Just straight oh. up, her and her mom just got oh, in the car. Gosh. But she was north in Florida, so she had less of a way to go. Yeah. <laughs> to drive up the panhandle. You and I would have to drive up the panhandle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she at least had – she was in Orlando area, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. Orlando, she actually, maybe, she was, in, maybe she was in Jacksonville. Yeah. For school. Yeah. Whatever it was, it was One far. of the two. It but took she, she was. Yeah. <laughs> it took us, I think, nine or 11 days total. I want to say 11 days total because we stopped – Sure. You know, in various places, like we wanted, you know, when we drove through uh, Louisiana, I was like, let's go get crawfish because that's yeah, what they're known for. Of course. So we, we drove and ate <laughs> our that, way across the state. That's the way to do it. It's the way to yeah. do it. And half those days are just getting through Texas. It was. It took us two and a half <laughs> days to get out of Texas. I knew the state was big. You know, you see it on the map. You're like, oh, that's a big state. Yeah. And when you're in it and you're driving and it's, you just don't feel like you're making any progress. No, you don't. And then finally you're out. You're like, <laughs> what was that? Why was, why was I in this state for so – all the other states we could do in one day, minus yeah. Florida because we had to go up north. Of course. But, yeah, we went from Texas, Dallas, Texas, and then we went from Texas through all the way through up to Colorado. Oh, cool. To see the Rockies. There you go. That's mm-hmm. the way to do it, man. Yeah, You did it like a fun. legit road trip. Yeah. Right on. That's All the parks. Yeah, I just went to Colorado for the first time last year before last. Isn't it pretty? It's so pretty. I went to the Garden of the Gods. Yeah. yeah. Man, you talk about another planet. That I know. Place is nuts. It's gorgeous. It's not great for people who have allergies in the in nope, the true. spring summertime, yeah. but it's it's great <laughs> other it's great otherwise. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Let's uh, gotta get back to my car. Just open your eyes. I gotta see this. <laughs> <laughs> Taking your allergy pills. Like, it's not yeah. working. <laughs> Take one of each. That's a big rock. It's a big rock. How's it on there? <laughs> <laughs> That's neat, though. So then, when so you came to the states for schooling, I imagine mm-hmm. you went there. Yeah. You went to school, and then so when did your interest in acting start? It was in high school. Right when on. it was summer school and I was there to, I wanted to get the math course out of the way. Always. And I thought it would be smart to just take one summer course and just did math. So, cause I am terrible. I don't like numbers and Same. they don't like me. Same. Same, right? They're the worst. Yeah. They're and worst. I honestly don't even apply what I've learned at all. No, because it's dumb. No. Nobody applies any of this stuff. <laughs> None, none whatsoever. None, zero. None. I've, <laughs> I've stopped adding a long time ago. <laughs> just, just pull out the iPhone calculator. Yeah. And like, all right. <laughs> done. Everything is by handfuls. I don't need math. I put the formula in Google and they'll do it That's for right, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I would do that, and uh, and when I was, you know, you can go and kind of sign up for the for the class because things weren't available on the internet, so you had to physically go in mm-hmm. back then uh, to to kind of see what courses you wanted to do sign up in person and a couple of my friends were in drama I was like, what's, mm. what's drama like what do you what do you she's like well it's acting and I thought okay well maybe I can do two this sounds like a fun elective and I asked my mom about it and she said ah it's summer school fine go for take it, it. <laughs> loved it yeah. loved it I was like, oh this is a thing huh this is a thing yeah okay and still didn't really pursue it in the ways that you know, when I started in college, you could go into the theater, the theater program. Mm-hmm. I actually didn't because one, my mom, you know, being a traditional parent, she was not for it. She said, you can take some side classes if you can afford to take the side classes, but I don't want it to distract from what you really want to do. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. Sure. I thought, okay, I want to wanted to be a meteorologist and then I saw the prerequisites oh. and it was a lot of like science and I mean I, I like science but I don't like math and it was a lot of math and yep it's like why do I need math telling the weather I'm not doing this <laughs> yeah. I can point without math <laughs> I can do the thingy without what they do on the screen on the news show 
tell you there's a cold front coming down from the north. I don't need Matt to do that. That's right. Uh, <laughs> take <a> rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to rain. Take your umbrella. I don't need Matt. <laughs> so exit out of that that train of thought very quickly. And then I thought, well, you know, I enjoy being creative. So I, I started to kind of look at advertising and I looked at uh, what was the other one? Yeah, I was advertising a little bit of a little bit of criminal justice because I had a spark of I wanted to be a homicide detective. Yeah, I watched too much, too much TV. I could see it. I could see that's... it. <laughs> you can put your sunglasses on and off. Yeah, and you're it. like, yeah, David Caruso. Exactly. Say my one one liner. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I wanted to do all of that, and it just kind of said to me that I wanted to do way too much, and also meant that I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I looked at acting as I can do it all. Oh, that's a great you can, point. You, you can play a doctor. Look, mom, I'm a doctor and a lawyer. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> and I didn't have to go to years of, you know, I mean, granted, the doctors we play, we see on TV, I'm sure if you have a real doctor look at yeah. some of the scenarios, we're like, that's not for that's sure. not how we do things. But sure, you know, yeah. it's dramatized for TV and it's, <laughs> yeah. it's fun for, for us to watch. Exactly. It's entertainment. Yeah. 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 So I sort of went from, you know, growing, I grew up dancing. My mom put me in dance class when I was very young because oh, I'm cool. the only child and I had too much energy and she didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> so uh, she said, let's go into dance class. Well, she didn't know that I was going to love it and I was going to beg her for the rest of my life to let me do it. Yeah. Dance is, is, is expensive. Yeah. And you, and this is such a stigma. Um, but, you know, back then when you re- kind of really kind of look at dance, they'll tell you like, oh, you age out at a certain age. Mm-hmm. Right. Because because not because you can't do it, but physically it is exhausting and and it wears down on your body over time. Sure. And so my mom was worried about a short career, an unstable career and an unstable uh, flow of money. And to be able to support myself through dance, is that going to be possible? So she told me no. Mm -hmm. So I kind of combined with that and just the love of performing and being in front of people and kind of playing this other character in dance and not being myself and being able to express myself in a different way, um, not having to speak or do anything, but, you know, just kind of feel the music and move. I really like that. And then combine that with what I knew then about drama or sure. acting. I, I was like, oh, this is it. But, you know, I couldn't, wasn't really allowed to pursue that in college. So uh, after like a few years in college, a couple of years in college, I decided, you know, I'm not into this thing, this college yeah. thing. I it's, it's not for me. It's good that I went, sure. but it, it wasn't for me. I my learning, the way I learn is very hands-on. So, so to mm-hmm. sit in a lecture hall and listen and just have to read and and then what the professor talks about in class. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but they'll they'll give a great lecture mm-hmm. and it's so much fun. You're 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 into it. You're like yes, and then they give you the test and nothing they talked about in that lecture <laughs> ends up on the test, but they tell you to take notes. <laughs> and then they don't tell you which chapters to read so you can actually verbatim remember exactly what you read on the page and just bubble in whatever correct answer it is. Sure. You know, it's like sometimes it didn't relate and I didn't understand that. I was like, just tell me then what to read so I can ace my tests. Yeah. You know, I, I do that at least. And they didn't. So a lot of professors didn't do that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Not not the best college experience as far as academically goes. Sure. <laughs> so I just decided my mom was already back in Taiwan mm-hmm. and it was just, you know, me and my aunt. And uh, I kind of said, I'm going to go to L.A. I'm going to pursue this something in entertainment. I think I want to do dance. I want to do acting. Wow. And it was really between New York and L.A. Always. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I just thought I couldn't do the winter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair. You made a good choice. Cause... Yeah. I don't know much about Taiwan, but it doesn't seem like the type of place that snows a ton. No, it was yeah. it was definitely not. The first time I saw snow was for like a trip in a student trip to Minneapolis for some sort of like convent, convention meeting, student thing, mm-hmm. leadership stuff. And it was in Minneapolis. And that's when I saw snow for the first time. And you learned it's wet and it's cold. It's- it's fun for about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy it way more when I'm inside. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Snow is pretty in pictures. Yes. It's very And cold. that's about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. pretty. 
it's pretty and light and fluffy, but when you have blizzard stuff, you know, where you're trapped inside your house or yeah, affects your, your travel to work, yeah, no. It's so weird. Like, if you don't have context, then you don't know until you know. And it's like, I, I'm originally from North Carolina, and it snows there, but it's only like, you know, a few inches at the craziest. And then I moved down to Florida when I was six, so then it's like you don't get any of that. So I remember <laughs> my wife is from Florida. So we went to New York um, last year or the year before. Whatever your celebration was, I don't remember. If it's Time is non-existent Ooh, anymore. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think it was last year. It might have been the year before. Whatever I year think, it was. I think, <laughs> I, yeah, I think it was the year before as well. We, we went to New York for like a weekend because we went and saw uh, Randall Duke came in a play. He invited us up to go see. So oh, we're wow. Like, so we're like, let's do that. So we did. And so we went to the play. We went to New York because we're right there. When neither of us had been. And it snowed a little bit. Central Park was covered in snow. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'm dressed for it. I got like a scarf. I got a hoodie up. I'm I'm golden. She, less so. And then <laughs> the day before we leave, we go to the play. And afterwards, we talked for a little bit. And everyone mm -hmm. in the play was like rushing out. And I was like, what's going on? They're like, oh, there's a major storm happening like right now. Everyone needs to go. Oh. Home. I was like, okay. Okay. I've never driven in the snow. All oh. right. And then <laughs> they were like, yeah, you should probably get going. I was like, okay, I'll, uh, I'll do that. So as, I, <laughs> as I'm driving back, we've got like a half hour drive from where the play was to where we were staying. And it started snowing on the window. And I was like, I don't know what to do in this situation because I've never had it. So I turned the windshield wipers on and it just smeared the snow on the windshield and i was like oh no i can't see anymore so we had this moment we're like oh, calling no. people we're like what do what do i do with this to like put the defroster i was like oh right that's a thing that's a thing and it ended up snowing like 11 inches overnight and she was like <gasps> freaking out like oh, it's our, it's our fuck can't get canceled i was like i don't know but look out the window it's snowing so hard this is crazy it was nuts that's insane it's nuts so imagine I, living you know, every year you get a Imagine little bit of that. Imagine living in that. Oh, no thanks. Wow, no thank you. I'm good. I don't need it. I don't need no. it. No, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so when you moved to LA, was it always going to be like TV and film? Or was it going to be theater? Or were you kind of down for pretty much whatever happened? I was, I was going, to, I was kind of leaning towards television and film. Sweet, sweet. And... You know, and I would explore theater if the opportunity presented itself because in high school we did do, there was a whole course called a uh, musical theater. Oh, cool. And I was, I was in it for my junior year and my senior year. So that was right on. a lot of fun, a lot of fun, but I'm not, and I love musicals, but I'm not the best singer. I can sing, but I'm, you know, I'm no Philippa Sue. So. Yeah. <laughs> few are, few are. Few, this is I think, true. She, I think she's only a treasure. one of those. She is the one and only. That's right. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, you know, like television, film, that sounds like fun. Yeah. So I wanted to pursue that. And what I didn't realize was that the entertainment path doesn't just equate to acting and mm -hmm. scripted. There was a lot more. There was hosting. There's, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, bun a, a bunch of stuff, which I didn't really realize. And then... YouTube was sort of on the rise too. So, sure. you know, as far as content creating goes. So I think at the time I kind of got tunnel visioned on what acting was. It was television and film and that was it. I did, it, it didn't even cross my brain. And for someone growing up loving all things cartoon and anime, yeah, didn't even think about, you know, voiceover acting also as a form of it's, it, it literally is acting. Sure. So I had to kind of learn and, and, and realize that on my own and kind of talk myself away from the stigma of acting means TV and film and nothing else. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, it's crazy, so that shifted a lot. Yeah. It's also crazy when you learn that like, I forget who said it, but somebody mentioned that like nine, some, some crazy high number, like 90% of SAG actors do not make enough to only do acting gigs. That sounds like, about right. <laughs> man. I was like, yeah, you don't know. Like, yeah. outside, you just don't know that. It's like, no, it's such a thing. And, like, the, you can differentiate. I mean, there's performers. There's people that do local theater. There's theme mm -hmm. parks. When you move to L.A., you probably realize that it actually has perfect weather as opposed to Florida. Yeah. Everyone's like, Florida is perfect. I was like, mm-mm, 100% mm -hmm. humidity, friends. 
Yep. But then you get to LA and you're like, oh, right, this. Was oh, it this. Was it crazy moving to LA from Fort Lauderdale? Because it's, it's totally different. Yes. I love the weather. I don't love fair. the smog. Also fair. <laughs> <laughs> I remember driving in. So we went from, I was telling you that we went from Texas up to Colorado and then mm -hmm. from Colorado down to Utah. Sweet. Because we wanted to visit Zion. Of course. And it's gorgeous. I from bet. Utah, we were going to like stay at night at, in Vegas. Oh. We were. We oh. got to Vegas and decided, let's just push through because we were done on this sure. trip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I hate driving. My arms feel feel like jello. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks. I don't want to sleep in a hotel anymore. <laughs> you know, so we just kind of decided to we we drove through vegas so we could see it we didn't stop sure and we just made it all the way through and we got we got into la and the first thing we did as we kind of crossed in as the sun was coming down i saw this orangey darky <laughs> looming kind of just over like this weird cloud colored thing mm -hmm. looming over the la city skyline and i was like what is that <laughs> and uh, my friend in the car goes, "Oh, that's smog." Literally, have not heard of what? Sure. What like, smog? Like the dragon? <laughs> yes, smog. Smog. Like, no, that's Wendy. That's pollution. I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> I don't want to breathe that in." <laughs> Cleaned my sunglasses to see, <laughs> put it back on to see if I could, I could yeah. maybe not see that awful cloud of of pollution it's still that's there. Right. Like, yeah, the okay, Jurassic that's my life now. moment. <laughs> <laughs> yep believe what you see right. um but coming to la was weird because i only knew you know my one friend that i travel with my boyfriend at the time mm -hmm. obviously now ex-boyfriend we because we we part we parted ways as people mm -hmm. do in life of course and uh it was just hard because we stayed with his uh dad's side of the family Mm -hmm. So that was nice to kind of have somebody that we sort of knew, but I didn't know them. He knew them, sure, uh, but I didn't know them. I didn't have any friends. And I spent my first week and a half, two weeks, maybe in LA uh, looking for a job, trying Fair. to find just any job because I, I knew that I couldn't afford not making money already. Right. And so got your, your stereotypical actor job at a restaurant There you go. Hey. <laughs> for the, for the next few years. That's part of it. Yeah, you know, it was fun. I wouldn't go back to it now, being being Fair. a server. But I definitely had fun at, for the most part, at the jobs. And the people I worked with, uh, and still in touch with a couple of them today, still a lot of fun. Right on. You know, yeah. Hey, but it was it was, it was character, tough. you know. <laughs> it, it does. It does build <laughs> character. <laughs> it really does. I really recommend everyone. Yeah. At least once in their life, do some sort of food service job. I think so, so too. That, yeah, you can exercise kindness when you don't get your ways at a restaurant. Yeah. You know what? It's just food. So uh, we know you're spending your money to come and eat. We don't want to mess up your dining experience. So tell us what is wrong. We will take it back and make it better for you, even though you have to wait. Because guess what? Food has to cook. Yep. It mm -hmm. happens. But we will try to make your dining experience as best as possible. There you go. You still got yeah. it, Wendy. You still got still it. Still got it. Still got it. <laughs> if I need to go back into it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I agree. I, I, yeah. think I think it's important. I think it's important to work yeah. with the general public. Yes. My, even even for a month, just just do it. Just for a, just to humble you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> and then knock you down a few pegs real quick. That's right. People can be mean about their food. For real. I, yeah. My first job, I sold uh, home subscriptions to newspapers, and I did door to door. Oh yeah. my gosh! I was like fourteen at the time, and I did it like three, four nights a week, and it just door to door, door to door. And you, but how do they turn away a fourteen-year-old? Uh, pretty easily. Uh, oh. Come to find out. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of them angrily. <laughs> oh no! But then other times you'll, I mean, you you meet the weirdest people. One, you're going to their house, which thinking back on it. <laughs> I don't know. Just didn't. I'm bad at math. I didn't put two By and yourself, two together. No yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was. So it was literally like it was me and like six other kids, and this guy from the newspaper company would come pick us up in a van and then drop us off in neighborhoods <laughs> and be like, "All right, this is your neighborhood. I'll pick you oh up in a half God. hour." 
Oh my gosh. And you... It would not fly today. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't think so. No, I'm surprised none of us got in trouble or beaten or kidnapped. <laughs> but you, you made commission depending on how, like, you could sign up for, like, a month or three months or six months or a year, and you made commission. And I was pretty good at lying at this point because, you know, that's acting. Yep. And, and uh, man, the excuses you would get. We had a guy on our team uh, who's definitely listening to this, but uh, <laughs> this woman told him uh, – she can't read anymore because she got struck by lightning. <laughs> and we were that's like, that's the best excuse I've ever heard. That's fair. All right. I hope that, and have a good night. I'm going to, I want to use that. I'm borrowing that. Yeah. hundred percent. Just be like, I got struck by lightning and I can't read. And I was like, wow. I'm doing that. All right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you work with the general public. It's important. Yes. Don't go to their house. Don't do what I did. No. I don't recommend. <laughs> No, no, no. Only for Halloween trick or treating. Yeah, yeah, and even then, you know, even then, be take, careful. Take buddy system. Yeah, don't go during their dinner time. They'll no. let you know if you do. <laughs> dinner, it's three. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Early dinner slam builds character. You know. Yeah, it certainly does build character. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So, then, do you remember your first acting gig? Then, ironically we were talking about many forms of entertainment and there's not only one type of acting, mm -hmm. uh, in Florida, oh. I actually, you know, in the, in the state of theme parks, if you will. Yes. Yes. We have so many Indeed. in Florida. I actually never worked in one. Oh, surprisingly never auditioned to be a performer ever in Florida, but I did once I got to LA, which is crazy. Of course. Uh, but prior to that, I was working for a kid's entertainment company. And we would do like birthday, birthday party parties. sing alongs. Yeah. Oh, we wouldn't dress sweet. up like clowns. I didn't, I don't like clowns. So sure. uh, that was not a thing, but I would dress up as a mascot character. So oh, something to the similarities of a Powerpuff girl, sweet. a mouse from a certain theme park, yeah. a certain purple dinosaur. Sure. <laughs> that didn't happen too often because of my stature, but if they were really in a grind, they were like, you can do it. Right. Okay, right. Sure. <laughs> Kids are shorter than you. Don't worry about it. Exactly. Exactly. So build character. <laughs> 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 and it was actually a lot of fun i was in that job for my from my senior year uh of of high school all the way to when i left florida to come to la and it was really? a lot of fun so many great people so many people that just love, love to be you know nerdy and love to dance and sing and create yeah. and perform so you know going from that to just uh to a restaurant job was was a little it was very different Sure, sure. Uh, you know, I didn't feel like I was meeting my needing, feeling that need of being creative and performing. Yeah. So there was an audition uh, for a company called Swordplay LA. Oh, greatest and I name said, ever. Oh. And what got me was on the casting notes is they're looking for children's party entertainers. Boom. I said, well, I've got years of experience. Yeah. Are they going to do sing alongs? It turns out they don't do sing alongs, they do because of the name sword fighting at kids parties you dress up as a pirate or a knight or whoever yes uh, star wars characters sweet uh yeah amazing and you would go and entertain kids for about an hour to an hour and a half however long the parents want you what i auditioned and for two weeks i didn't hear and i was already having a hard time in la because i didn't know anybody right. i had just started out of my job i feel like i fit in you know I, I don't know maybe i made the wrong move i should have gone to new york and then i got the call there you hey go. Sorry, it took this took longer than we thought. We'd love to have you. Hey, oh. Accept it right away. I was like, yes, absolutely. And was in, uh, so we would have rehearsals because sword fighting is, you know, can you be know. dangerous and around yep. kids. Yep. Yep, liability. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of training before we were we were able to be sent out and put a you know a weapon in our hand or anything like that. Sure. So uh, it was a lot of fun. It's how I met my husband. Right on. Yeah. Good place. Good and place. Good place, good memories, and that's that was my first gig, essentially. Wow. Yeah, and I was with the company for years, for really? a long time. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> Thank Man, you. What a way that usually it's like backpack number two, and you're like, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> no, give me a cutlass. That's and, right. Uh, you there, lass. <laughs> that's right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Right on. What a way. What a way to make a living. Yeah, it was great. It was fun. Not bad. Not bad. It's the the acting bug, you yeah. know. Oh, I bet. 
I bet yeah. you're getting, and you've got the performance side of it where you've got kids reacting. So you've got that mm -hmm. immediate return, like theater. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. A lot, him, a lot of keep playing the game from there, I imagine. Yeah, just a lot of a lot of different, you know, a lot of auditions, a lot of rejections. Uh, yep. mm -hmm. Took that to took that very hard because I think in Florida for some reason I just felt that because I was so comfortable in my circle of performer friends, uh, whether it's high school friends or within the entertainment company, I was so comfortable and I just felt everybody was so talented. And then you come to LA, LA is really competitive. Oh, yeah. Not saying Florida isn't, but LA is a different type of. For sure. That's, wh that's where it's at. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's harsh. And uh, I, I, you know, there's a, there's a lot to learn and you can go to XYZ acting classes. You can hear all the scenarios, but sometimes you, it doesn't not, it, it's not until you experience a maybe a bad audition or a weird audition or a rejection on your own mm -hmm. before you can kind of look back at someone else's experience that they taught you or talked about in class and go i get it now yeah. i know why you you know talk about this over and over and over you know whatever it may be like don't watch out for this in in, in casting when you're in a casting's office sure don't do this don't do that not and then you get it because you you experience it sure wow. sure sometimes that's how humans learn so lots of auditions uh i remember the first, I don't know if it was a national commercial, mm -hmm. though I I think it was, I want to say it was regional, but then it was on the internet. It was like that weird yeah. deal yeah, where yeah. It's, it, it, would, it would show on, on television and things like that here in this region in LA. But then I think it, on the internet it, it was shown because I... Because I remember my friends from Florida saying, "I didn't I just see you in a water commercial? So it was a very <laughs> fun audition. Uh, it was for Crystal Geyser. Perfect. Perfect. And I went in for, you know, an audition and it was just improv, just play. And they had, really? you know, a table set up. Yeah. They're like, yo, you pretend you're at a really boring meeting. You're not paying attention. <laughs> you're talking to your coworker who is also not paying attention, but you're trying to be um, sneaky about it. You don't want to make it known that you're actually not paying attention. You know, you want to just like, you know. Sure sort of a thing and like, oh, yeah we're paying the, yeah good point good powerpoint slide good powerpoint slide yeah <laughs> Some, something like that so we just got to play in the audition and i love that when you're not confined to a script you're just you just have an idea hell yeah and then the casting director says go and you can just go until they stop you yeah and it was fun so we did that did a call back and then got the call i think the next day before their office is closed and i had given up because i had the call back i felt great about the call back and I hadn't heard anything all day the next day. And I thought, oh, if they don't, you know, office is closing by at, at five. So, um, mm -hmm. and when they close, they close, they're done. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because then maybe they have to prep for next week's work or whatever it may be for casting directors who are always so busy. Sure. Um, and I thought, oh, I didn't get it. Okay, well, I move on. You just have to learn to move on. You have to. And my phone rings and it was my agent and he's like, he, I, and I thought, oh, he's going to tell me I didn't get it and tell me that it's okay. And it's on to the next. Sure. It's very kind. <laughs> and he said, uh, Wendy, you got, got the, got the job. You film next week. I'm like, whoa, what? amazing. Yeah. So yeah, it was my first LA set. It was wow. so, it was so fun. We had with the full wardrobe hair, you know, catering, all that good stuff. People, I was sitting in the makeup chair and they kind of announced, Oh, breakfast is ready. And I said, okay, well, well, you know, when this is all done, go, go and get it. No big deal. I'm not a breakfast person. I, if I have coffee, sure. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the PAs came in. I was like, uh, what, "What would you like to have for breakfast?" And I said, "Oh, that's okay. I'll 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 go out there and get it myself later." No, no, no. You're the talent. I'll get it for you. What? And I thought, "What does that mean?" <laughs> I can go get my own breakfast. That's okay. And I just felt bad. And I didn't. That's another thing, you know, being at the time so green to this whole thing, not realizing that like people do things for you on set because you're quote unquote the talent. Right. 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 Like, I don't have uh, any cash. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any. Uh, uh. So, I mean, I knew about that. I knew about the crafty on set. That, that wasn't. Oh, yeah. Because um, I've been on set before. It was just the first time that I wasn't what it wasn't like a supporting or background or sure. things like that. I've done tons of those in Florida. Sure. Um, and, and been on numerous sets, but not not where you get your own dressing room. <laughs> right. Right. Sort of thing. Not, not when they, you know, refer to you as like all oh, the talents, like a background. Yeah. Over here, be over here. Don't make noise. 
That's right. Okay, when I yell action, you action. Background action. That's right. You are a living prop. <laughs> you're a living prop. More movement, more movement. Yeah. <laughs> more natural. Look like you're like something. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. so this was a different experience for me where they're they're very accommodating and I, oh, oh you don't have to move, I'll get this for you. And they took my order and they brought my plate and they made sure there was everything I wanted. I was like, what is this? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> I just I'm not used to being kind of waited on hand and foot. Right. And I think that was kind of what was weird to me. <laughs> Kubo says, I get it. He's like, yeah, I agree. I wanted my eggs this way. Kubo, you don't even like eggs. <laughs> this is his first appearance. Amazing. He's, he's started a new thing where he likes to bark now. He's found his voice. He has. <laughs> he has. Kubo, tell me your thoughts. Tell me your thoughts on things. But no, it, it's weird, especially if you've done something that's background and like supporting and stuff like that, because it is a vastly different experience, especially background. Background is something mm -hmm. that I learned where I was like, oh, cool. I totally like I, I'm on set. It's going to be this great thing. You know, also a hard lesson I learned. Background casting and principal casting are different departments. Yeah. You don't learn that. <laughs> <laughs> Not until you try it. Exactly. So you're like, oh, cool. My agent booked me this role. Let's figure this out. And you're like, you're one of 50. And I'm like, you said oh, they asked for me. <laughs> like, they sure do. They called you and said, we want this one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can imagine it'd be such a weird thing where having been almost on the other side of the coin, when they're like, oh, what would you like to eat? You're like, uh, I guess the, those granola bars, if you have them. I'll take I'll take those. Like, are we? Can we have more than one? Is that is that allowed? It's like, no, no. You get yeah. like food, food now. It's yeah. cra It's crazy. Yeah. Yes, you get hot food. You're allowed to go to the cooler where the sodas are. Yeah. Uh, you Wait, can grab there's sodas. You there's sodas. There's <laughs> Oreos. So you can grab the. You can actually grab from the crafty table, uh, yeah. and not get not get yelled at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really. This is not for the extras. This is not for background. That's right. That's right. As a background actor, I always brought my own huge, giant backpack of snacks. That's so smart. I got in trouble one time for like standing in the sun because what? I am a, I'm a, I don't know if you can see, I'm, <laughs> I'm allergic to sunlight. Um, I get sunburn from opening the fridge. Oh and boy! <laughs> <laughs> so we spent a day, we spent a day on set, and you know it's Florida, it's hot. Yeah. And the makeup ladies saw that I was standing in the sun, like, "Excuse me, come here, come here, come here. You need to, you're gonna get sunburn. All right, get get in the shade." And I was like, "Oh, yeah. okay, sorry, 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 yeah. sorry." This Just, was background work, or was this? Yeah, this was background on Ballers, actually. Oh, fun! Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, Dexter. Oh, sweet! How yeah. was that? What was that like? It was actually a lot of fun. Yeah. They actually the 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 uh, I think we were mostly with the second AD. Sweet. Uh, for the day, he was the coolest ever. He was he was like handpicking the because he because he knows you sure. know background like sure he he gets it. So everybody was really nice to each other, and he said, "Uh, it's, it's funny, like day one and day two, because day one we were with the first unit, so it was Sweet. <laughs> a little bit different, a little bit more more intense, and there was a lot of uh, background do this, background do that. It's yeah. like I'm just here to walk, <laughs> yeah. whatever you tell me. It's, I, I don't want to make waves, you know. But the second one we had fun. He would, you know, pick a couple of the girls, handful of girls, and come here, stand here behind the 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 lead, there Michael you go. C. Hall. Oh yeah, and then, and I kind of did like a like a sweeping sweeping ba uh, bathing suit shot." There of all go. of us. I don't remember which episode it was. I want to say episode five of season one, but I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but that was that was a fun one and they let us have whatever we wanted from Crafty. What? Like it was that was a fun experience. Look at yeah. you getting yeah. it. Yeah. I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feeling love, myself on that one. I love seeing those kind of sets because you don't realize how many people are there. Mm -hmm. like, oh right there's like a hundred people doing like was that was that on a location or on like a stage? It was on the beach. Ooh. So your story of the sun reminded me of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine was on location as well. It was like a yeah. marina. They had this scene where it was oh. like they were talking on like a yacht, and I was one of the yacht workers. Mm -hmm. It was like me and one other guy. And then we didn't end up using the shot. Like we didn't end up oh. shooting. So it was like one oh, of the, it, it was one of those days where like call time was like five thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I had to, you know, drive from Naples to Miami. And then we <sighs> shot for thirteen hours and then we're like, All right, we're moving on. I was like, Oh, we're not we're not doing it? All right. This uh, is new. <laughs> I mean, I guess at least you got paid to sit around. That's, that was a day. I guess. I, yeah, exactly. That was a day that I learned something about myself was that for me, it was never about money because I did get paid, but I was angry yeah. because I didn't get to work. 
Yes. I was like, oh, interesting how my priorities just changed in my brain. Mm -hmm. Mm. And then you have to think about it the whole two-hour drive home. (laughs) Yep. Just sitting there, like, soaking into the defeat of, like, welp. Okay. That that happened. You you got your voucher. You're like, all right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) So then when did you start? Because you've done a ton of hosting stuff as well. Yes. When did you decide to take a swing at that? Because that's different than, like, it, it's a type of performance, but it's not the same thing. It's a different. Right. It's a different skill, in my opinion. It's a a lot of your if you're trained in improv or if you have any sort of experience with improv, which mm-hmm. uh, teaches you how to be a great listener. Yep. And not just not not just waiting for your turn to talk. <sighs> for, real. <laughs> for real, people yep. got me up a wall. <laughs> yep. Improv classes are fun, even if you are not interested in it. If you want to be in entertainment of any kind, whether it's hosting, content creating, I think it's good for it. At least take one like. I don't know, improv 101. Agreed. At the, at the very least, and if you hate it, then you hate it. But at least you you went and you tried it or at least take take away from the class, uh, you know, yes and. Exactly. <laughs> it's just good in life like it's to know how to yes and. It is. I use that a lot in my restaurant job. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you collected a lot of bad situations that way. I bet. I bet. Oh, yeah. I bet. Yes. And what if I got you a dessert on the house? That's right. Oh. That's right. <laughs> okay. This is undercooked. Yes. And I'm going to get you a new one. <laughs> yep. Not but. The second you hear but. But what? Yeah. I paid $50 Ooh. for this thing. <laughs> I mean, yes. can be fine for money. <laughs> <laughs> the cynical Wendy would have been fired. Yeah. Multiple times. <laughs> what do you All want the inner about it? <laughs> <laughs> They don't need to know about it. I put on a, such a mask at work. That's right. That's right. You were acting. <laughs> I, was acting. I, was, I really was. I would put on my, my uniform. Yep. Yep. You know, and Get like your costume. Two. Yep. <laughs> like, all right, call time and go action. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's all it's all contextualizing it in your head. <laughs> and then you new table sits down. You're like, and back to one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new way to look at it. If you're an actor doing a restaurant job. That's right. <laughs> Any That's job, right. there it is. That's right. We broke the code here. You're welcome, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, back to one. That's right. That's right. For yep. hosting, it was. It was, it's kind of a weird way that I went about it. So my husband loved this show that was on YouTube mm-hmm. called ANC Movie Talk. Oh, sweet. And it was a panel of uh, film enthusiasts and lovers and pundits that would, you know, kind of roundtable discuss current films, current entertainment news, casting news, you know, change mm-hmm. of directors on a film, things like that. Sure. Anything you would read in the trades, essentially. Mm-hmm. And he loved the show so much, but he didn't love the show because of the news that he was getting out of it. Sure, that was interesting and that was, you know, good substance, Mm -hmm. but it was the personality and the people and their conversation. There you go. Is what hooked him. There you go. And he would be so obsessed with the show. Like almost whenever they had a show and it became weekly, he would watch it. He would religiously sit down. He's got to watch it. It's an hour long show. Sure. Table talking heads. (laughs) And, uh, I would sit down with him and kind of watch with him because, you know, it's the, the trade. So I should know as an actor, I should know what's going on and the directors and who's working what and the mm-hmm. trends and things like that and uh, started to enjoy the show. He still liked it more than me, but I, I watched and I found it entertaining. And then I think he somehow, I don't know how this happened, but the main host, John Campia, he somehow were friends with my husband on Facebook. I don't know how oh. that happened. I don't know. Okay. It's one of those, like he was adding fans mm-hmm. and maybe it was, a, I don't really know exactly what it was. Cause like, I never, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't do that. Sure. So anyways, <laughs> he told me, Hey, uh, you know, that show that I like AMC movie talk They're they're looking for someone like, like a, uh, an assistant to, you know, to the studio and, and just help with, their their daily ins and outs and things like that not really on camera but more administrative sort of side of things sure i think you should drop off your resume and 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 try i said oh they're not gonna hire me i sure i have experience in office work and administration and organized and things like that but i i'm sure and i'm thinking they have they would have you know tons of people applying maybe they did i don't know sure but to humor him i 
send in my resume and an email and cover letter and all this, all the good stuff and kind of like, P.S. My husband and I are a fan of your show. Uh, <laughs> adding a little, adding a little color to my to little personality to my to my to my email, cold emailing, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Got an email back by the end of the day and saying, Hey, I uh, love your resume. Uh, you sound cool. Thanks for enjoying the show. Why don't you come in for an interview? Hey. Yeah, and a few interviews later, actually got the gig. And started really? working. Started working behind the scenes, just anything they needed uh, on the administrative side. So whether it's to kind of book uh, various panelists, not so much guests, but uh, panelists for sure. their various shows, keeping things organized, make sure the office is stocked, things like that. Um, essentially, if they needed me to run a card from our location to another location, mm -hmm. and vice versa for interviews and things like that, I would go and do that. Nice. It was fun. It was fun. It was it was in this industry, and again, this was a learning um, opportunity for me because I didn't. This is when I realized, oh, hosting is like a thing, and content creating and talking about movies is also can be also seen as a form of entertainment. Oh yeah, for sure. So yeah, and I had just so much fun with uh, not just the job, but the people I got to work with and the people I got to meet. Sure. And then eventually they would be, hey, you know, you want to come on camera for this one little thing here and there, and they would, you know little bits and pieces they wouldn't let me host it because i was so new right. right hadn't hosted before so i mean i i was comfortable around the camera because uh by then i had i had started my youtube channel also inspired by the same show love it um but it wasn't it wasn't big it was just a it was a fun thing my husband and i like to do um and after a little while meeting more and more people and more hosts and being around that environment i really you know, took a liking to it and kind of explored that more on my own with the YouTube channel right? and eventually sort of fell into because they would then eventually, even though I still kept my job as, you know, uh, administrative side of things, the job let me wear a lot of different hats. So sometimes you would appear in a video to give your opinion on certain things like, oh, Wendy, you're passionate about this. Let's have you talk about it. Hey. Great. Yeah. There you go. Just being yeah. in the room, man. Yeah. Makes such a difference. It really, it really, the, when they say that, it's true. A hundred percent. It's yeah. all, it, it really is all who you know. And it is yeah. being in the vicinity. Cause like we yes. need, we need someone, uh, hey, you come here. Yeah. Crazy. Fresh take. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's so cool though. You got like Thank your own you. little, it's also important to learn, to be able to learn on the job. I think it's something that's like invaluable. Yes. You know, and you were able to do that. So that makes your road makes sense here. Yeah. It that's makes cool. sense here. That's pretty it neat. does. That's and from there, it's kind of pivoted a little bit. You know, it's sure. it's now I now I and I don't feel like I have to choose between hosting or, or acting. Right. I, I feel like don't. I want to be able to do it all. And you don't you don't have to. So that tunnel vision, Wendy, of uh, acting means this has has really gone away. And um, and maybe it's not acting. Maybe it's just something in the entertainment industry. Sure. Sure. I mean, you're good at all of it. So that kind of it's not fair to everyone else. But like, you got to do what you got to do, <laughs> you know? That's that's cool though. I love the movie couple. I think it's Thank a great. You. I love getting the takes of it all. I love you, how you guys break things down. And uh, I worked video production for a while, so I also know how much work videos are. Yeah. So I uh, I respect it. I respect Thank it. you it's so a, much. It's a great channel, and you were doing it already. So that's the other thing is like, especially nowadays with YouTube and the internet, when it comes to a job in entertainment, you really can make your own road. Yes. It's just gonna be a ton of work. Yeah. Which all that extra energy and drive comes in handy <laughs> with stuff like that. Yeah. I yeah. tend to want to take on too much sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. same. What is, <laughs> we don't need as much sleep as people say we do. We don't. <laughs> Three hours is fine. <laughs> That's right. Now I'm not a scientist, but uh, pretty sure you don't pretty need that sure. much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm just on my 10th cup of coffee. That's right. That's right. Which is fine. It's fine as long as you don't get to 15, I think, is the golden area. You're gold. <laughs> so then when you did hosting, was that something that you kind of like were drawn to naturally? Like, oh, here's this thing. Like, is, is it really fun for you? It wasn't in the beginning because I would work myself up. Mm, and I felt fair. weird that I would have to, one, learning how to talk directly into a camera was different for me. Oh, I bet. If you're acting, you you unless otherwise you're if you're breaking the fourth wall, uh, you don't typically look into the camera. You look past yeah. it or next to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Rule number <laughs> so, one: don't look into the camera. Don't look into the camera. So that's that's sometimes a little weird for me, depending on what kind of self tape I get. I have to kind of read the breakdown. Like, is this commercial? Is this right. hosting? 
am I looking into the lens or am I not looking into the lens? Where where do I put my sticky note for my eyeline? Sure. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> what do I do with my hands? <laughs> so you shoot at a medium. That's right. That's right. Please. <laughs> Please. Shoot at a medium. And so in the beginning, hosting was a little nerve wracking for me because I was so used to following a script. Right. Right. And hosting is you don't get the, you know, sometimes there's no cue card and you just have to, and if you're, especially if it's live and you can't go back and edit mm -hmm. uh, because we're live streaming, because that's a thing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can't, you gotta, you gotta roll with, roll with it all. And if you mess up, you gotta be able to laugh at yourself and correct yourself and go yeah. back. So I think it's with practice, both, you know, from ANC and then once it transitioned over to Collider Movie Talk, kind of, learning through my experience with with that job and also with my own youtube channel and now with the youtube channel before we started live streaming it was all i can you know fix it in post right, right? As they always say. but then i realized once i started editing videos and more videos and more content i don't like to fix it in post i just want to get it right <laughs> on the first take yeah understandable understandable so i do the mentality of straight to live straight to tape and no editing except for a couple of graphics here and there, and that's it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Way less work. Yeah. Way so with that, work. with that, like I feel like, and I'm still learning about hosting all day, every day. Just, sure. just like acting, a continuous skill that I exercise all the time, continue mm -hmm. to learn all the time, and it's gotten, I've gotten way more comfortable with it. I host. Uh, I'm one of the hosts for Sideshow Collectibles. Yep. Yeah. Uh, giant uh, toys and collectibles Crazy. company yep. and might have heard uh, of it. you might have heard of it if, you, if you're <laughs> into nerdy fun things uh-huh uh-huh and uh in the beginning i would be a nervous wreck even though Fair. i've already had experiences mm -hmm. you know doing it but at that 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 insecurity and the am i prepared enough and i don't want to look the imposter syndrome kicks of course in. of course yeah and you have to while you're talking to the camera and you know it's live and and people are watching you and you don't want to misrepresent anything. Mm -hmm. um, all, and you have to push that down and just focus on being, you know, the best presenter you can be. Sure. So, uh, but I like it. I like it. I like the challenge and I like how sort of like clay, you have to really mold the piece as your segment, whatever hosting segment you're doing goes on. Because especially if you now, if you're hosting by yourself and you're saying, for example, we will use Sideshow as, as an example. If you're doing a product highlight right. and you're just talking about the piece and you're by yourself, that's easier to contain and and to kind of have in your head what you kind of want to say. When you're sitting down doing an interview, such as like a podcast, sure, you can have a roadmap of where you want things to go. But if you've met the you know the person you're interviewing for the first time ever. Mm -hmm and you don't maybe have that chemistry quite just yet because you literally have met them five minutes before you go live, Yep. Uh, you have to adapt quickly. For sure. <laughs> yeah. You have to adapt quickly, and you have to constantly – you have to, a, a good reminder of being a, a host and do a good interview is that it's not about you. It's yep. about them. Absolutely. And Absolutely. That's yeah. that's another thing. In the same vein of people who are talking and just waiting for their turn to talk, I was like, you can tell when there's people, especially who have their own shows, where you're like, what, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> what is what is who's interviewing who? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's nuts. But it, yeah. I, do you find that most of the hosting that you've done or do is off the cuff improv, or have you had to use a teleprompter or anything like that? We use sometimes if there's a lot of copy, a lot of uh, technical terms, oh, they will point. give us it's not really teleprompter, but it's more mm -hmm. bullet points that they have in front of you. So if you need to, you can glance to it very quickly Smart. just so you can say it correct. You, you could because, again, um, for Sideshow, you know, these viewers, a lot of time international viewers, mm -hmm. they want to get all the right specifics. Right. So they know what they put there. And yes, it's all on the website, but th they're watching the video for a reason. Good point. So you want to make sure you're delivering the facts correctly. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have to go back later and correct yourself. And you don't want to do sure. any of that. Sure. You want to present it the best way possible. Exactly. So sometimes they'll do that for us, which is, it's honestly, most of the time it's up there for sec it's the security. Ah, you makes know? sense. So, so something to need it. Yeah. make sure it hits. Yeah. yeah, nobody's gonna memorize those technical terms off the no. cuff. Come on, man. 
<laughs> yeah. Because sometimes it's a lot. I bet. Sometimes it's a lot. I bet. For That's... a different hosting gig, for, uh, you know that scene with Focus Features? Yes. That was, I got to do season one and they asked me back for season three. Ooh. So that was nice. I think two episodes are out right now. One is the one I hosted, which was the high note because it's a, it's a panel of uh, pundits in, in the film critics in the circle, right, but right. Uh, we all take turn hosting and the, it was a fun one for season three. Cause they're all my friends. Sure. There you <laughs> go. Was, hey, there you was, go. The camera was on and we, we would just kind of go off the cuff until the director said, Oh, let's, let's bring it back to the film now. Cause now you're, <laughs> now, you're now they're just talking. Like, oh, sorry. Sure. <laughs> so that was a bit of mixture of slightly scripted and non-scripted. Mm -hmm. The opening and closing of the show is lightly scripted. They give you an idea of this is how we would like to, for you to open the show and close the show. Obviously, the show title. Sure. What the show is about, which movie we're talking about here, and then to mm -hmm. close where they can find us, all the typical stuff, you know. Sure. Um, the movie where you can find the shows, this and that. Uh, make sure that they, you know, check back for more content like this one. And the unscripted part is once you make your intro, here what we're discussing, these are the, you know, scenes from this movie that we like, then it's non-scripted. Nice. And then it's, it's just a nice round table conversation about why we love this movie and why, why certain parts of the movie resonated with us. And then just when you're hosting that episode, it's your job to if this conversation goes a little off rail mm -hmm. or if it starts if the conversation starts to get a little stale sure you segue on smart you have to moderate it you have to moderate it and you have to realize the this conversation is getting dead in the water and uh we're yeah. gonna head to the next point and then or like hey let's end it sure let's do, let's you know and luckily with that one because i was with so many seasoned professionals who literally do you know, film criticizing and, and things like that from sure. film we've been doing and they've all been on TV, you know, for a living. It was, it was really easy because we all do the same thing. So sure. you could tell, you could read each other's eyes and say, we, we are, we're all going to move on now. Sure. You have that kind of shorthand sort of thing yeah. going on. Yeah. That's cool. That's really, that's a genius way to do it as well. You like lay the groundwork in the beginning and the end just to like, all right, let's go into it. And yeah. then you can kind of run from there. But you have to get started first. Yeah. Smart. Smart. How was New Zealand? Oh, man. I know, right? New Zealand was amazing, magical. I implore everyone to visit. And the visit was too short. The reason I got to go to New Zealand mm -hmm. was for uh, to do a set visit for, a, uh, for Disney's live action Mulan. What? It was what? amazing. Yeah, it was a work trip. So I definitely worked. Sure. I definitely I, I worked. Bet. It was a very short three day trip. Oh, wow. Very quick. It was, you know, time to fly. Well, maybe it was more than three days because of travel. Sure. We were on land <laughs> for <Yeah>. three days. <laughs> and it was funny. And I got, I got, you know, the email and the phone call uh, from both the uh, Disney publicist and Collider's editor in chief. Hell yeah. And uh, said, hey, we would like to send you on a set visit. I know this is your first. This is not something that you've done before. Believe you can do it. It's for Mulan. Ah, you here's might have an heard NDA. of it. Here, yeah, here's an NDA you can't tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> for over a year, I was under embargo Jeez. for a long time. And uh, people were like, where are you going? Why, why are you going to New Zealand? And I would just have to say it's for work. There you go. There you for go. Work. Well, what, what are you, what's acting. filming there? Yeah, but people know. People knew. People either, yeah, they either knew you were filming something <laughs> Or you were going for work uh, for for your job at Collider. Yeah. So it was a ton of fun. I had never gone to New Zealand before. Yeah. And Brian, if you ever get to go with your wife, I you know you should just put this on your list. Oh, I'm gonna for sure. For sure, it's Lord of the Rings world. Yeah, that's true. Come on. <laughs> you Come gotta on. go. Da, 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 da. Exactly. Uh, you have, to have to go. Um, the first thing I noticed once we stepped off the plane, and we did the thing where you come down the. Oh, sweet. The, the steps. What? Uh, yeah, because we so we flew from from LAX out to New York, and then from there we did the transfer, and then we flew. I think it was a straight flight. To, wait, is that the way we went? I don't remember. I actually, <laughs> I just knew we flew out of LAX. I remember that. <laughs> That'd it's been be too weird long. if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but we flew to was it Auckland? 
that's in New, New Zealand. Zealand. Oh, great. I was trying <laughs> to make sure I didn't mess up my New Zealand towns and my Australia towns. I've done it on this show before. <laughs> so I was like, uh, oh, yeah, what? Queenstown. I was like, in Australia? And they're like, no, New Zealand. I was like, oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I knew that. <laughs> that's literally the next town I'm going to say is Queenstown. <laughs> <laughs> Which Queenstown, now I'm New doubting Zealand. it. <laughs> Queenstown, New Zealand. So we landed in, in Auckland and we just we just uh, for a layover and then uh, hopped on a smaller train and, and flew into Queenstown, which is where the set was. There you go. Was it and, how, yeah. how lock and key was it? Because, you know, it's a Disney set. It's Mulan. Like We were allowed to post to social to say you're in New Zealand. You're here for work. You cannot say who you're here with. Uh, it, it was just, you know, a lot of a lot of secrecy. And, and I am sure people who worked in the industry figured it out, but they would also know and respect that, you know, embargo. So they wouldn't they wouldn't ask too many questions. But people knew people who who I knew who worked in other outlets and uh, they would text me and say, I enjoy the Mulan set. Yeah. I, and I would <laughs> I, and I would not write back. It's just because I can't, I can't confirm. I know. <laughs> and it's actually spies using your friend's numbers on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, it was very, it was very much under lock and key. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they were. It was, it wasn't so lock and key that you can't post and be a human. Right. You didn't have to wear Obviously. hoods. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> it's just incognito so dark sunglasses that's right that's right <laughs> they give you your own baseball cap yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> everything black that's right that's right that's the a... air quality in new zealand when i stepped off that plane though wow yeah you I actually never to breathe for the first time I, it was like pure oxygen wow. it, it is pure i i took a deep breath and i felt like i was exhaling all the uh smog. lax smog away <laughs> it was just I don't know how to describe this air, and I know it's so weird. People are, who are listening to this podcast, I am so sorry for the way I am I'm that so I'm talking into about this air right now. <laughs> it's pure, unfiltered air that made you feel light and whole. It's that it's that elven magic that's in there. It is. It's given. I mean, think about it. Trees. We're going down the rabbit hole. Get your tinfoil hats, friends. Trees yeah. give us oxygen. <laughs> Ents are tree people you were you were inhaling ant air ant air oh, that's why you it felt was magical glorious and the people were very nice the food is excellent Ooh, yeah oh, man. yeah the food is excellent i ate we ate so much and anything that was like a new zealand new zealand specialty whether it was a tourist trap or not we did it yeah <laughs> we did it. i was like i don't care i'm here for three days give me everything i will i will you know it's not like i really watch my diet but i certainly didn't if i did i didn't care about it yeah <laughs> I was there. there you go life's too short for that mess get out of here yeah yeah <laughs> so i think it was like gabriel iglesias that talked about like dieting cake. yeah yeah you know he's like if i'm gonna die in three days i want to be full of cake not lettuce or something like that and i was like exactly. i subscribe to this yes i agree <laughs> i co sign <laughs> that's right that's right that's nuts yeah for for sure New Zealand and Australia are pretty close to top of my list. Australia, just because oh, yeah. it's on the other side of the planet. And I just want to be yeah. like, hey, check it out. I've traveled yeah. Earth. But yeah. New Zealand is like, it's another world. Literally, another it's world. Middle Earth. Middle Earth. And the wind, and you probably already know this because y you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, but mm. the wind of Rohan is no oh. joke. Oh, sweet. <laughs> is no joke. It is no joke. Uh, you can also experience... Uh, all four season in one day. Oh, sweet. It was freezing in the morning when we first woke up and I didn't know how to pack this. You know, I live yeah, in LA. Sure. <laughs> so I was like, okay, a lot of leggings, pants that are slightly, you know, bigger and more loose so I can, I can layer underneath and I can take off things if I want lots of scarves, lots of thin jackets, again, good for layering. Yeah. Uh, so it was, we were on set and in the morning it was, it was cold. It was a little foggy. It was a little bit rainy overcast. It was windy. And it, and it was uncomfortable for an L.A. girl slash Miami girl. I yeah. was like, oh, my God, this is not for me. <laughs> sure. What is this? What is this? By two, three, I was – the scarf, the beanie, and the gloves have come off. I'm rolling up my sleeves, <laughs> and I'm putting a copious amount of sunscreen on my face because the, the sun is really, really strong there. Oh, uh-oh. Very strong there. It doesn't feel it sure. until – until you feel it later yeah. <laughs> you're like i made an error in judgment so Ooh. 
bathe in SPF when you go. I am so glad for that warning because I've not heard that one. And I was yeah. just going to go in no clothes. And now I will have to. You know, layering is something I've never heard of until I met Savannah. <laughs> that seems so appropriate. Yeah. They're like, it's all about layering. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I wear true. jorts and t-shirts every day. What is this layering? <laughs> I feel like if you went in the summertime, you probably, you would be okay. Uh, I yeah. don't, didn't experience any sort of bug bites, period. Oh, what's that like? I, oh, <laughs> it's amazing. The bugs, they find you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I go outside, I come back in, there's four welts, you know, on my body. I'm like, what is this? I don't react well to, to mosquito bites. Fair, fair. Yeah. Yeah, my I wife's mean, the same way. Big old things. Big. Yeah. Yes. yeah. You're like, what What happened to you? <laughs> what? Are you a Demogorgon? Did you go to the Upside Down? That's right. What happened? That's right. I thought we talked about this. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Very little amount of bugs, if any, in New Zealand. That sounds fantastic. It keeps getting better and better. No. So, I hope you go, and I hope I get to hear all about it. Done. Everyone is going to hear about it if I go. So we I will have when. to. What we'll have to do is come back on this podcast. Done. But then I'll host it. Done. And then you'll. And I'll just interview you for the entire episode, and you you can talk about New Zealand. Good luck, deciphering the screaming. <laughs> 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 so then, when did you decide? I mean, I'm not surprised you did because you have so many different avenues and you're doing so many different things. When did you decide to do your own podcast? Because I'm a fan. Thank you. It's pretty good. It's a pretty oh. good show. Thank you. I dig it a lot. Thank you so much. It was born when I listened to a podcast called Asian Boss Girls. Ooh, that's the best name I've heard in a long time. Yeah, wow. It's very much a podcast for your modern day Asian American yeah. woman. Uh, Love it. Working class or teenage class, but the hosts, there are three of them, um, Melody, Helen, and Janet. And they uh, also are super nice in real life. Because uh, that's, that's they, they build a very awesome community for everybody to come together and just talk, especially during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And just a lot of great stories and a lot of great topics on being uh, an Asian American woman, whether in the working class and kind of in today's world. Sure. And since you have growing up, whether you are uh, born here in the States mm -hmm. uh, to Asian parents or like me growing up in an Asian country and later on migrated to uh, or immigrated to the United States. Sure. And to kind of have three different viewpoints because they're all various ages. They're close in age, but they're still varying ages. So obviously that means various experiences. Sure. And to kind of hear just how off, off the cuff. Yeah. podcast also like uh uh my favorite murder is another favorite one of mine and they're very much off the cuff and it's very fun and loose sure and that's when i realized it's kind of another form of hosting but it's very informal absolutely well i guess a podcast can be as formal or as informal as you want to be totally i prefer the informal same yeah. same I'm a big just fan like of having it. Yeah, just like having a uh, listen to people talk and what i liked about it was that there is minimal editing work there's no graphics. True. It's just a track that you can cut, you know, make some time marks and uh, timestamps. And you say, oh, I got to cut this part out real quick because there was an awkward pause. And then you, that's it. You're yeah. done. Yeah. Especially coming from video. I mean, it's yes. night and day. So, oh, it's only half of it. <laughs> I have to put on makeup when I talk to people. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. <laughs> don't have to wear pants if you don't want to. That's right. I haven't gotten up. <laughs> <laughs> we've been sitting this whole time that's right <laughs> you got the note right <laughs> don't stand up yeah <laughs> turn, off your, turn off your camera before you stand up <laughs> what we've learned in today's zoom meetings that's sort right. of a world <laughs> that's right that's right uh, but i wanted some sort of like a accompaniment uh a companionship if you will to the geek and glitter fashion blog yeah smart Yes. Smart. And I wanted uh, a way to have a discussion about just various, you know, fandom things, not necessarily focusing on news of the trade, even though I do that sometimes, but more of the, the, the merchandise and the fashion and, and things like that. And I loved it because when I first started, I asked two of my good friends, uh, Emma and Kim to be a part of it. And 
I, it was going really great. We all have, because we're friends already, we all, we all have really good chemistry. Sure. Uh, and then I, this is all my fault. This is, this is me <laughs> overworking myself and putting way too much on, on my shoulders and too much workload that I don't make time for myself. Um, the, the schedule started to, and, and they're, both of them are super talented and also hardworking and work a lot. So mm-hmm. scheduling can also be an issue to find the right time for people. And I prefer for me a physically being in the same space type of a recording. Same. So that's a little bit harder to, to schedule sometimes. Totally. When when it comes to three people Mm -hmm. and we, we borrowed Emma's equipment who she, she's kindly played a sound engineer for, for a lot of the episodes. Beautiful. And uh, she's great. And uh, so, so it was my fault that it kind of started to go a little bit um, kind of, I burned myself out a little bit Sure. when it comes to work. So I, the scheduling started to become unstable, which is kind of still is, I'm still kind of on trying to work my way back into a steady schedule. I haven't quite figured it out. So I'm still playing with it, but I'm still delivering content. Sure. And um, because of the pandemic, I tried to shift to, you know, virtual and it's just not working for me. I mm-hmm. and I'm having such a hard time with this. So I took like a four months hiatus. There you go. Do I just you, couldn't do, do it. What you gotta do. Yeah. I took a two yeah. months from this one. Oh, did you? Yep. Yeah. 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 You gotta do what you gotta do, son. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And also, I was I felt kind of you know at the beginning it was it wasn't just the pandemic. It was you know how the pandemic turned into sort of political. Yep. Same thing. Um, and I didn't love that aspect of it. I, you know, it's science and it's a pandemic. And it's a global thing. It, it, I don't, I, I didn't understand. I don't understand why it's turned into a us versus them. Um, weird topic thing in the U S mm-hmm. um, black, black lives matter and the social injustice that all hit at once. Yep. And being passionate about all of those things listed. Same. I became very depressed. Same. And I felt that talking about nerd stuff was not important. Yep. Say, you're you're singing my song. Yep. <laughs> yeah. A little, little golf club for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I just was so depressed, and I was so 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 focused on creating daily content for the YouTube channel that that kind of took priority. Because at the beginning of uh, April, I was unfortunately furloughed right. from the company, which you can't be mad about that. It's a crap situation that everybody's in. I mean, if you mm-hmm. want to look at Disney Park. You know, they're laying off 28,000. Yeah. Some friends. Across. Yeah, same. Crazy. I got the news last night from a few friends. They texted me and it's, uh, my heart breaks. My heart goes out to them. I know what that feels like because in August, at the beginning of August, I was officially laid off. Sure. Yeah. Damn. So, you know, and it's one of those things you're mad, but you're, but you're also understand. You, you're not, you're mad, but you're not mad. Right. It's like, it sucks, but it, in, in a, it makes sense, but it's not cool that it makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, so it's a lot of kicking and screaming and also like, well, what what can they do about it? What can they do about it? Everybody's losing in every avenue. Mm-hmm. Everybody's losing money. So I was really focused on on trying to, you know, bring more viewers and bring more content to our YouTube channel, to the movie couple and see where this potentially could take us and really focusing on that. Because that, that was something that I had really wanted to do for a long time. But Collider's workload was a lot. Mm-hmm. I and, bet. you know, coming home at like 6 p.m. because I had a long drive to and from work, mm-hmm. I, sometimes I didn't want to film a video and I didn't want to edit a video. Fair. And you, it's, you can't do my work when I'm at work being paid for, you know, sure. you can't, <laughs> I probably shouldn't do that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. So, no. <laughs> Sure. So it, it didn't give me the time that I wanted to work on, on my own content. So uh, once the pandemic hit and once the furlough kicked in, I was like, well, better now than never, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of what happened to the Geek and Glitter podcast. So I brought it back. It does have a slightly new format. Sure. It is a solo person format. It's a shorter time, mm-hmm. but not completely done with guests. I've li- I'm lining up a few guests and a couple of wish list people that I would nice. uh, like to have on the on on the podcast to talk about especially i i want to highlight small businesses Ooh, i like it yeah and content creators sure we want to do that yeah i love it again there you go we all are we all are 
I, I love that. I love, And I love talking to creative people because it's like you have so much energy, right? But it's like energy isn't quite the word. It's like drive. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then you just have to find a way to funnel it. And like I recognize the same in in myself as well when you're saying like you have this thing where you have a job, but then you go home and you do your own work. So like I'm working to work, but also I can I can totally do more work than the work that I normally work. And then yes. it's like that's why I have so much respect for creators, for anyone who goes out there and makes their own stuff. Because as a consumer, you do not understand what you're looking at. Like that is hours of shooting and putting energy out to perform, to edit, to put out. Like, whew, if only people knew. So I, 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 it riles me up to be like, oh, that's really cool. Like, you know, we're in this together kind of thing. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite things, uh, having been following you for a while now is you're just, you're getting at it. You know what I mean? It's it's inspiring to see that sort of, "Mm," (laughs) that go for it, you know? And is it weird to kind of hear that and also think at the same time in my head, because I am that awful of a person, I'm not doing enough. Oh, same, same. Oh, good, I'm not the only one. Dude, listen, I work every night for the last like 11 years while doing acting gigs. So I've I've literally worked, like I remember I shot a movie a few years ago where I would work at night come home, take like an hour and a half nap and then go film on set for 15 hours and then go back to work. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, what a grind. And I did that for a while. So I was like, but then I'll, and now I compare that to now and I'm like, I could totally do more. (laughs) (laughs) Much more. Yeah. Watch me time manage. Yeah. Oh man, I'm awful at it. And then I go through (laughs) those lulls where like, I'll, I'll be like, you know what? I could take a break. Mm-hmm. which is what I tell myself before it comes break time. And then when it's break time, I go, I could be doing so many more things right now. And then I'll go through spurts where I overwork myself for like forever where I'm like, all oh, right, I have 15 shows to record in the next two weeks. Why did I do this? It's like, cause last week I didn't have anybody. And I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible yeah. with free time. Yes. It's bonkers. But Hey, we make cool stuff, right? It's true. <laughs> it's least... true. I enjoy your podcast so much. It's so, oh, it's, it. I mean, no pun intended, but it is really interesting. I mean, I damned myself from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it, all, I, all I need is one episode that isn't, and then I'm ruined. <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> well, I love talking to it. The guest is like you said, the best, the, my favorite thing about my show is it's not about me. It's about the guest. And I was so excited to have you on, but I wonder, uh, being from the same ilk, do you have any advice for anyone who wants to get into entertainment? Because you're doing so many things. Like, if they wanted to host, if they wanted to act, if they wanted to do their own YouTube channel, do you have nuggets that you'd be like, hey, this will help that I wish I knew beforehand? Yeah. I would say consume as much content as you can to find out which one truly resonates with you the Ooh, most. Smart. But don't limit yourself to just one. Don't look at a YouTube channel and whatever their content may be and and say, this is the only thing I want to do. Give yourself room to pivot, um, have a concise idea of if you were to create this channel, what other angles you can kind of pivot this into. So for example, for the movie couple, we folk, it, our channels pivot a lot. Our name had changed. It used to be called Our Zany Life because our last name is Zany, S-Z-A-N-Y. Love it. Love it. And we wanted to do a play on name. And then I realized it's not going to work because neither one of us are actually Zany. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and why would people care about two random strangers? Mm-hmm. And then I thought, okay, how do I tighten that up just a little bit? Sure. And I knew that the reason why we wanted to start our YouTube channel wasn't just to pointlessly blog. Mm-hmm. And I say this coming from all my love of watching blogs. I watch way too many hours of people <laughs> blogging about literally anything and everything. Um, and I and to kind of hone in on on what we wanted to kind of center our our channel around is I knew Dustin and I both were into film. We love movies. We love the experience that it gives us. We love nerdy movies for the most part. Superhero movies, fantasy movies. That's our thing. We love it. And so we centered it around that and kind of taking a note from ANC slash Collider Movie Talk. Fantastic. And said, you know, let's sit down and, and do our own reviews and let's give our thoughts. You know, we never claim to be professional. Sure. We just like movies and we like talking about them. So in our opinion, are merely opinions. It's not a fact. And unless we drop a fact saying like, you know, 
Guillermo del Toro, winner of Academy Award for this movie. That's a yeah, fact. Yeah. That's not an opinion. <laughs> Actually, excuse me. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, I would say kind of have an idea of your pa- if you're passionate about fashion. Yeah. If you're passionate about cars, center that around and expand outside of that. So yeah. for us, you know, a little bit of once, especially once we start building an audience, and people, some people, not everybody, kind of want to take a look into uh, kind of your life, how you live your life. Mm-hmm. And that's where the vlogs come in. That's where the Disney vlogs come in because we're huge Disney fans. Sure. Yeah. I love so it. that's what I would suggest. Just uh, kind of focus on something you're the most passionate about, but don't mm-hmm. let that be the only one. Explore different options um, to figure out if YouTube is for you. If you don't like to edit videos... Mm-hmm. not that you can't learn about it you can always learn about video editing there's tons of, of i google so much but yeah. <laughs> if you try editing and you try it for two weeks straight and you absolutely hate it maybe youtube isn't for you but guess what yeah. there is um if you don't like to edit you can live stream there is no editing involved yeah and you can just talk uh you can podcast yep. which is much lighter mm-hmm. you can have a website and blog about things uh, you can go on Twitch, you know, so there, there's very, there's a lot of avenues. You just got to figure out what is going to work the best for you. Because at the end of the day, this is your passion mm-hmm. and you, you don't want to form that idea to someone. What, what else you don't want to start with? What would they like immediately? You right. want to kind of find a compromise between that, you mm-hmm. know, because you don't want to feel dead inside when you're talking about something only your <laughs> <laughs> And you're, and you're hating every word that's coming out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, because you you still have to do the work. So yes. make sure you're passionate about it because it's way more work than you think it is. But you don't want to go back and listen back to whatever content you just created and you're like, I hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everything I'm saying, why? Right, right. <laughs> like if you hate Star Wars, don't talk about Star Wars. Agreed. Don't do it. Agreed. It's been or like... unless, unless that's your brand, I guess. Yeah, that's true. In, in which case... Get over here. It. I, got no, <laughs> I got no time for you, son. <laughs> My God. Well, hey, this has been way fun. We so did, fun. Thank we you did it. So Look much. at this. The, so I, one, man, I knew you were great beforehand, but this was just, it just solidified all my theories. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thank um, you. Before I let you go into the world, though, where can people find you online to mirror my sentiments that you're amazing? Thank you so much. Uh, you can find me uh, for social media on Instagram and Twitter. And it's just my name at Wendy Lee Zaney. Last name is spelled S-Z-A-N-Y. Beautiful. On YouTube, you can find me at The Movie Couple. Uh, we're on Twitch as well, but we don't do as much on there. And then if you are into geek fashion and, and uh, you know, basically all things geeky and girly, it's uh, geek and glitter. And it's the letter N because the, the words geek and glitter <laughs> domain yeah. was... So of it's course. Geek Glitter and Glitter in love podcast it. and blog. Love it. Love it. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.